Hi, my name is Bogdan Kulinich. I'm going to talk about um, POTS, Protective Optimization Technologies. Uh, sorry, it's a, it's a joint work with uh, Rebecca Overdorf, Carmelo Troncoso, and Seda Gurses. So in the FastStar community, we talk a lot about algorithmic decision-making systems. Uh, what I'd like to talk about now is something slightly different. It's what we called optimization systems. These are socio-technical systems that operate under the logic of optimization. That is, um, they optimize some metric over their environments in order to extract maximum value out of these environments using technology. I'm going to show you some examples. Uh, so let's say automated job application scoring. It's a classical decision-making system, but you can also look at it as an optimization system. Indeed, uh, there's some scoring model that could, for example, maximize uh, similarity of new applicants to historical hires. Another example could be Facebook ads. Uh, here, Facebook uses information about user behavior to match ads uh, to users in such a way that it maximizes users' engagement and Facebook's profit. One example of an optimization system that I don't think is very commonly considered a decision-making system could be Uber uh, ride matching. Here, Uber matches uh, drivers to riders and sometimes sets uh, dynamically the prices in such a way that it optimizes the supply and demand. Um, so why, why we think this framing of optimization systems is useful? It's because, um, unlike decision-making systems, it enables us to look past the effect of individual decisions that the systems are making and towards a more holistic view of these technological systems and how and why they operate. And also, it enables us to have uh, maybe a broader conversation about the effects and the harms of the systems. When we're talking about decision-making, uh, we're most commonly talking about the harms of discrimination and bias. But when we're going beyond decisions, uh, we can see other negative effects that technological systems can have. For example, with Facebook ads, the way they operate, it relies on mass data collection. Uh, with Uber and other ride-sharing services, um, there are academic reports that argue that the way they optimize supply and demand is through oversupply which results in traffic congestion and negative environmental effects. Um, so now we have this uh, more, more wide uh, and more uh, diverse set of issues of technological systems. And what I'd like to ask now is how do we deal with them? Uh, how do we rectify these issues? Well, algorithmic fairness is, of course, one possible solution. It addresses the issues of discrimination of technological systems, and it's usually supposed to be done uh, by design, fairness by design. So the provider of the system that could be discriminating uh, is supposed to employ a fairness solution. What we argue in the paper is that algorithmic fairness is not always the right solution and the right framework. Um, by focusing on discrimination, we do not consider other possible harms, such as, for example, mass data collection, as I mentioned. And other problems, um, they stem from the by design approach, and perhaps this is connected to the previous talk that mentioned uh, imbalance of power. Um, so we have a system that negatively affects some people or populations, and it's not these people or populations that decide how it needs to be fixed. Um, it's the provider of the system that ultimately decides who values what and who needs what, which might be an issue. Another problem, uh, I think, comes from the way uh, we computer scientists approach the world. So if there's an issue with a technology, we want to build a better technology. If there's an inefficient algorithm, we're trying to design a better version of this algorithm. So here, if a system is biased, we would try to unbias it. And it's a great approach, uh, but um, in this particular case, it makes this huge but often implicit assumption that the entity that caused the problem to someone is going to be interested in fixing this problem, um, even if it potentially benefits from it. And if, especially if we're going beyond discrimination and beyond basic legal compliance, this assumption just does not always hold. And these are, of course, uh, political and philosophical argument that we're making. But in the paper, we're also arguing some of them in the formal way from the perspective of engineering and mathematical optimization. So I'd like to go back to my question. And um, in light of this uh, uh, drawbacks of algorithmic fairness by design, is there anything else that we can do? 
So of course, there's policy and legal solutions, but is there anything else we can do still in the technological domain? We argue that yes, and it is what we call protective optimization technologies, or POTS for short. These are technological tools and interventions that counteract and expose harms of optimization systems from outside of these systems. So my, you might be wondering, what, what is that? How does that look like? In the paper, we have actually considered two case studies we, where we have built two proof-of-concept pods from ground up. In the first one, we look at traffic routing apps, such as Waze or Google Maps. And the harm uh, that we consider is, according to many reports, they cause uh, traffic congestion in towns that are adjacent to busy highways. So what we do in this case is we build a tool using techniques from planning that would enable a local government of such a town to find specific road segments here in black that should be slowed down, uh, for example, with speed bumps, in such a way that waste does not route through the town anymore when the highway is congested. In another case study, we look at a machine learning-based credit scoring uh, system that is discriminatory or unfair. And here, we use techniques from adversarial machine learning. We assume there's uh, a group of deployers of the pod that will run a so-called poisoning attack. They will inject very specific training points in the training data set of the model in such a way that the model will make fewer mistakes on some target group, to some extent rectifying the issue. So to sum up, POTS, protective optimization technologies, are technological tools um, that contract or expose negative effects of technological optimization systems. And they are an alternative approach to algorithmic fairness because they do not rely on provider cooperation. Uh, the system provider could even be adversarial. They come directly from those experiencing the harms of the system and they could cover harms that go beyond discrimination. We designed some pods from ground up, and in the paper we have actually also compiled a big list of technologies that could be used as pods, and even some pods that we have found in the wild. So this approach of contracting from the outside might seem radical, or it might seem that we're advocating for gaming the system, but when all means of accountability and communication fail, pods could provide novel ways of contestation and resistance, and this could even be the only ways of contestation and resistance. All of the pods that we have seen in real world, they are very heuristic, very ad hoc. Sometimes they're artistic projects. So what we call for now is that we, as a community, approach the design, analysis, and implementation of such protective technologies in a systematic way. Thank you.